Okay, we're going to continue along with this module by talking about what causes a change or a shift in the short run aggregate supply curve and the aggregate demand curve. Now, in the last unit, we began looking at just what the aggregate market actually was. And if we take a look here at this first screen as kind of re a review, we remember that um, we mark the y-axis with the price level and the x-axis with the RGDP, or the amount of output that our economy produces. And we remember that we have an, a downward sloping aggregate demand curve and an upward sloping short run aggregate supply curve. And that we mark the price, the current price, with a small p sub 1, and the current RGDP with a small y sub 1. We also showed that when aggregate demand increases, then the price would increase and the RGDP would increase. Uh, incidentally, that also meant that inflation would increase and unemployment would decrease. And again, this is all review from our last lesson. We also took a look at aggregate demand decreases. And again, just quickly, we'll go through this here. As aggregate demand decreases, we see that prices decrease and RGDP decreases, which means that inflation would decrease and RGDP would decrease, meaning unemployment would increase. And again, this is a review from our last module. Now with that in mind, the one question we really haven't addressed is what causes aggregate demand to change? We see what happens when it changes so far. We don't yet know why it changes. And we're going to review that in this lesson. So with that in mind, what causes a shift in aggregate demand? Well, the short answer is this is actually a, <clears throat> excuse me, a very easy lesson to cover because the truth is we already on some level know the answer. The answer is anything that causes a change in RGDP. And remember what that was. That was consumption, investment, government spending, and net exports. If you need to take a minute and go back and review exactly what counts as consumption, investment, government spending, and net exports, then feel free to do that. But the short version is, if any of those things are increasing, then people have more demand for our GDP. And so aggregate demand is going to shift to the right. Again, if anything that increases GDP increases, then so does aggregate demand. So again, here's a look at what aggregate demand uh, shift to the right looks like. And if I gave an example here of an approaching holiday season increases sales of toys across the nation, well, just as a side, that would probably count as consumption, which means aggregate demand is going to increase, which means prices increase, RGDP increases. If I try again, the government decides to pay for a new public pre-K class. Okay, well, again, that this time is government spending, and again, it counts as an increase in aggregate demand excuse me, an increase in RGDP, which results in an increase in aggregate demand. We can actually go through this quite quickly because, again, we have already learned what increases the GDP. Anything that increases the GDP is also increasing aggregate demand. And the last one here, due to an error in the demand for vehicles, excuse me, due to an increase in the demand for vehicles, a car manufacturer builds a new plant. That sounds a lot like investment. And again, that would increase aggregate demand. OK, now we'll look briefly at some examples where aggregate demand decreases. If, for example, there was fear about the economy's future, and that caused consumers to spend less, that would decrease consumption, which would shift aggregate demand to the left, or decrease it. Another example, there is an increase in imports because of reduced tariffs. Remember that imports are negative in our GDP. Net exports, the last category of our GDP, is actually exports minus imports. So if imports increase, that actually decreases our RGDP and therefore decreases our aggregate demand, shifts it to the left. Here again, the government cuts spending to balance its budget. That also would be a decrease in government spending, and therefore a decrease in RGDP, and therefore a decrease in aggregate demand.
Okay, now we're going to bounce over here and take a look at aggregate supply. And again, it's just a quick review from yesterday's or from the previous module. We note that a decrease in aggregate supply means an increase in price and a decrease in RGDP. And if we look at an increase in aggregate supply, we have an aggregate supply and aggregate demand curve here. Aggregate supply increases. That means that price is going to decrease while RGDP increases. And again, that's just a review from the last module. But again, what causes that to happen? Well, very simply, what causes a shift in short-run aggregate supply? Well, there are really two overwhelming uh, components to this, uh, to this particular thing. The first is anything that changes the cost of production. And that's very similar to what we learned in microeconomics anything that changes the cost of production. If it is more expensive to produce a good or harder to produce a good, then the aggregate supply would decrease. So for example, if there was a change in wages, if workers suddenly got large wage increases, that would increase the price of producing things and therefore decrease aggregate supply. If there was a change in the cost of energy, if let's say there was a gas shortage and the price of gasoline rose tremendously, gas is a major component of producing uh, almost every product that we produce and therefore the aggregate supply curve would decrease. Changes in the cost of raw materials. Um, if there was a, a hurricane uh, that wiped out, for example, Hurricane Andrew in the 1990s knocked out a huge portion of the lumber industry and therefore massively drove up the price of housing, which is a big chunk of the economy, and therefore aggregate supply decreased. So when raw materials go up in price, that can be another reason why. One of the ones we'll spend a little time on this semester is the cost of government regulations. Um, if, for example, the government begins to require uh, new environmental laws be put in place uh, on a product, of course that does make the product more expensive to produce generally, and therefore the aggregate supply would decrease. So anything that increases the cost of producing a good is going to increase, excuse me, decrease the aggregate supply curve. And you know, just as a quick reminder, it is true that the aggregate market measures the entire economy, but since every single product and every single person in the economy is one small part of the aggregate market, changes in any one small part of the economy you know, changes just in the housing market, which is not smaller, changes just in the wine industry or changes, whatever the industry might be, changes in any way, no matter how small, will affect the aggregate supply curve, even if just a small amount or the aggregate demand curve. Okay, the other big one is changes in expectations about inflation. And here's why. If people are concerned that inflation is going to occur, Remember, we learned that wages tend to lag behind. So what do they do? They ask for more money up front. If a worker is signing a five-year contract and he fears that inflation is going to happen in the future, then he is going to ask for higher wages, which means, back to our first point, that the cost of production is going to increase and therefore aggregate supply is going to decrease. Let's summarize that. Sorry, one more time. Any time that we fear inflation is going to get higher, not necessarily that it is, but that people fear that it's going to happen, they are going to insist on higher wages and therefore increase the cost of production and decrease aggregate supply. That's sort of a new wrinkle on the issue. It really is still just an issue of cost of production, but it's a new way of thinking about it. If people are afraid inflation is going to occur, then inflation will cause a decrease in aggregate supply, or fears about inflation will cause a decrease in aggregate supply. It's actually one of the reasons why some economists really believe that inflation is even a larger problem than unemployment, because if people have inflation, then they're going to fear future inflation, which is only going to make things even more expensive to produce and make the situation essentially a self-fulfilling prophecy. So inflation can be a real issue. Okay, let's try some examples. Um, we're going to start with some situations where the supply curve is going to increase. Um, if, for example, labor unions agree, or a major labor union agrees to a pay decrease, 
All right. Well, so for example, this happened a few years ago with the car industry, where the unions decided to take a pay cut in order to save the car industry. Well, that made the cost of producing cars lower, and so aggregate supply increased. Um, if oil prices dropped, really oil uh, affects virtually every part of our economy's production. So if oil prices are lower, the cost of producing almost everything is going to decrease. And so aggregate supply would shift to the right or increase. And again, just as a review, remember a shift to the right means prices are lower and GDP is higher. Fears about inflation are low. If in, people are not fearing inflation, they're not going to ask for wages that are quite as high when they sign a contract. And therefore, the cost of production stays lower and aggregate supply can shift to the right. Let's try some now where aggregate supply decreases. Okay, a natural disaster cuts into the orange crop uh, in Florida, let's say, or in California. When that happens, certainly the price of orange juice is going to jump dramatically. And since orange juice is one of the components of the entire aggregate market, just one of the many products, it would decrease the aggregate supply curve. Um, there's an increase in the minimum wage. Um, though this would also probably have an effect on the aggregate demand side, which we'll talk about some other time. The reality is one of the things that a lot of folks who argue against the minimum wage have said is that if you raise the minimum wage, then the cost of producing things is going to go up. If you raise the minimum wage, for example, for a fast food restaurant worker, the price of the meals they produce is probably going to rise and therefore aggregate supply is going to decrease. Um, there are some counter arguments to be made, but for our purposes right now, we're just looking at aggregate supply and it's pretty reasonable to conclude that if salaries are higher, aggregate supply will decrease. Lastly, there's a fear that inflation will rise in the future. If uh, a Major League Baseball player is going to sign a 10 year contract and he's worried that inflation is going to rise quite a bit over time, he's going to ask for a higher salary now to compensate for that rise in prices and therefore it's going to cost more to hire him now and therefore cost more to produce a major league baseball game aggregate supply will decrease okay let's do some examples um, and we'll try these together what i'm going to do is put a, a situation on the board up here on the screen stop the video after each one try to figure the answer out yourself and then check your answer here we go Okay, a new law requires employers to pay for their workers' health coverage. Again, stop here for a second, think about this. You may want to draw a sketch to kind of help you get comfortable with this, and then I'll give you the answer. The government increases spending on the military. A thousand new homes are built. Natural gas prices decrease significantly. Okay, stop after each one, and then I'll give you the answers. All right, let's go back to the top now. A new law requires employers to pay for their health, workers' health coverage. The question you wanna ask is, does that make people want to consume more, or does that make it harder or easier to produce goods. In this case, it sounds like it'll be harder to produce goods because employers have to pay for their workers' health coverage, and therefore it would be an aggregate supply decrease, which results in a price increase, an RGDP decrease, and because prices increased, inflation increases, and because RGDP decreased, unemployment will increase. And again, make sure you're able to sketch that and show the change in price and quantity. Okay, the government increases spending. That sounds like it's gonna be aggregate demand. It's one of the components of our GDP. Aggregate demand increases, so prices increase and our GDP increase. Inflation will increase because prices increased and unemployment will decrease because our GDP increased. And again, make sure you can sketch and draw an aggregate demand increase review to earlier slides in this presentation if you need to. Okay, new homes are built. That's gonna be investment. Uh, same answers as uh, the previous example. AD increases, 
price increase, our GDP increase, inflation increase, and unemployment decrease. And lastly, a natural gas pipe, uh, excuse me, natural gas prices decrease, that is going to increase aggregate supply because it lowers the cost of production. Prices will increase, our GDP will increase, inflation will decrease because prices are decreasing, and unemployment will decrease because our GDP is increasing. All right, we're going to finish with a little summary. And one last point to make here, and that is this. Inflation is caused, what we've learned, is that inflation is caused essentially by either an increase in AD or a decrease in AS. And because we want to distinguish between those two things moving forward, we're going to give them separate names. If it is related to AD, it is known as demand pull inflation. So any increase in aggregate demand that causes inflation, and every increase in aggregate demand will cause inflation, is called demand pull inflation. If the inflation is related to the aggregate supply curve, because aggregate supply has decreased, it is known as cost push inflation. And one more time, again, here's a little reminder of what we learned in our last unit, a little summary to help us understand exactly how changes in AD and AS are related to price, inflation, RGDP, and unemployment. And also, very importantly, please make sure that in each of these instances you can draw a clear graph illustrating exactly what a change in AD or AS looks like and how it affects price levels and RGDP.